Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this video is going to be going over the patch that Blizzard announced today, 2.6.5. I'm just going to be going over all of the changes on the PTR and kind of what they mean and what I think of them, so let's get into it. It's always a great day when there is a new patch for Diablo 3. It's a reason to get excited for next season and kind of theory craft over everything that's going on. So I'm glad that we're still getting patches for Diablo 3. It's always fun to see and I'm always excited to read these when they come out. So in this video, I'm just going to kind of start at the top and go through everything and kind of talk about it. First of all, the PTR for this patch is going to be starting Friday, April 5th. And it looks like it's going to be lasting about a week. <clears throat> Get your normal, you know, buffs to drop rates and blood shards so that you can actually test things. But there's not a whole lot of things to actually test gear-wise um, outside of the lawn changes, which I'll get into. Um, none of this really matters. Um, okay, now we kind of get into the meat of the patch here. So, this I did not expect. Torment 14, 15, and 16 have been added to the game. On the surface, I think this is a good change, um, but I'm kind of neutral on it. First of all, the difficulties need to be truncated. There's way, way too many difficulties. They need to shrink this down to like Torment 1 through 6. At, be, and instead of segregating it into so many different difficulties like we don't need 16 different torments like that's fine to make it to make the highest torment tougher like to go past t13 i think that's okay but they should have just truncated the the difficulties down and removed some of the ones in the middle like t4 and and ta to like remove some of these difficulties that don't get played very often and truncate everything down and then smooth out the numbers in between all these levels if you know what i mean but yeah there's just way too many difficulties in the game and i hope at some point they shrink that down into less torment levels but all in all i'll give this a positive change that i'm kind of looking forward to trying out Portals left behind by treasure goblins may occasionally lead somewhere utterly ridiculous. In my opinion, this is going to be leading to a cow level. The whole utterly part of it. Cows have udders. This is, to me, this means, uh, you know, sometimes goblins are going to be leaving behind a portal to the cow level that we would previously access by using the bovine bardiche. Uh, but, yeah, so now... <laughs> Treasure God was going to be giving a portal to that level. Um, okay, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of neutral on that change. I mean, it's, it's not a bad thing by any means, but all right. Next, using an ancient or primal puzzle ring in Kanai's Cube will produce a new result. So this is a cool change. I think this means that it's going to be like a better goblin rift probably, uh, or, you know, more goblins. You know, there it could be a... a, a a goblin rift or uh you know, whatever i don't know what where this is going to go so that's probably one of the more interesting things to actually test and on the ptr and see what it actually means right when the ptr goes live go online throw a puzzle ring in it could be double goblins in the goblin area i mean something uh it's going to be something like that but all in all a good change party portraits now display if a player's cheat death buff has been recently used pc only this is a really good thing to happen. It's important to know when people in your party have used their cheat death. This is a big quality of change. Addition for hardcore players. I'm not so sure if it's going to be super useful for softcore players, but definitely better than not having it. So this is a positive change. <clears throat> Excuse me. When a boss is killed in a Nephilim rift, a permanent ping will mark the location of the boss's death until the rift is closed. This is a really good change, especially when you're farming keys in public games. A lot of times people will be like, where's the key? Can I get the Rift Guardian? Can I port on you? No one knows where the Rift Guardian was killed. So all in all, this is a very good change. And a lot of good players were throwing their banner down where the RG died. That way people could kind of see where the RG died for sure. But all in all, a good change there. The Greater Rift notification screen has been or has received a rework PC only. Greater Rift notification screen. I think this means uh, when you plug a key and it 
pops that little prompt to let you accept or cancel. I think it means they reworked that in some way, maybe to make it less intr intrusive or something, make it smaller. Uh, you know, I, I bet it's something like that. The Greater Rift completion screen has received a rework. So that's the screen that pops up after you kill the Rift Guardian in GR and upgrade your gems at Urshi and then you close the rift in town, that big screen that pops up that shows all four players, how long it took you to complete the rift. That's probably getting into a similar rework where it's maybe not so intrusive and hopefully it provides some more useful information on it or something. But yeah, should be a, an interesting thing to kind of see exactly what they came up with there. Matchmaking no longer prevents players from joining a game while a greater rift is already in progress. Players who join the game will still be unable to join the Greater Rift in progress. That makes sense. So yeah, basically uh, just helping people kind of group up and keeping your game live and available for new players, even if you're in a Greater Rift. The progress bar for a Greater Rift is now visible to all players in the game, regardless of whether they are participating or not. That's a cool change for people who play public games. When you kind of join and you're wondering, you know, how long till your Rift is over and that stuff. So now it'll be visible to them to see exactly what's going on so you know a solid change not not game breaking or anything but you know why not have it in there that's good quality of life this one is massive additional stash space has been awarded for all players pc and console pc gets five additional stash tabs that is crazy and then console gets 140 additional stash spaces um Sounds like a lot. I don't know exactly how much is in each tab. Probably something like 70 or 80. So, um, you know, console is, is getting a, a pretty significant buff to stash base as well. As PC getting five additional stash tabs, that's awesome. Um, you know, now you're going to be able to actually save all that backup gear if you're a hardcore player. Save that support gear. Save, you can save, you know the GG versions of every set, you know, you're going to be able to do all sorts of, you know, mixing and matching with your stash and there's going to, you're going to have the available stash space to do so. And they gave this away for free. Blizzard could have, you know, released like a $10, you know, DLC that includes five stash tabs or something. So, Hey, you know, kudos to Blizzard handing this out for free because additional stash space is something that players would have been willing to pay for, but they're giving it out for free. So, you know, thank you, Blizzard. Search functionality has been added to stash PC only. This is incredible. If you're familiar with Path of Exile, they have a function where you can kind of click into your stash and you can type in like, you know, Leoric Crown and it'll highlight like Leoric Crown in your stash, all of your instances of that item. So this is really cool. I did not think something like this would be coming to Diablo 3. So this is a big shock to me that this is happening. And I'm excited to use it and check it out in game and see how it functions. So another awesome change there. All crafters now have an expand slash collapse all button for recipes. Sure, you know, why not? Um, thanks. <laughs> Most bounty indicators are now displayed immediately after entering the bounty area. This is a really good change. Uh, people don't like doing bounties in general. So the, the faster you can let players get in and out of each area is the better in my opinion. Death breaths now drop in Herodric caches. Herodric caches are what you get from doing those bounties. So now they're going to provide you with death breath. And I guess they're just trying to give a little bit better reward for doing bounties because, uh, you know, people don't like doing them in general. So increasing the rewards for the Herodric caches is a welcome change in my opinion. All right, seasons. Seasonal journey now displays all chapters regardless of current progression. Okay, you know, sure, thanks. Um, and then we get to the big bombshell of this patch. We finally know what the buff for season 17 is going to be. And, you know, it says players damage dealt is increased by, you know, and they, they, they word it in paragraph form. But what this is, is every player is going to get the Legacy of Nightmares set by default. Uh, just by being level 70 and wearing ancient and primal items. Um, this is a change that I've said in previous videos that I think this should be normal. I think this should just, this should be permanent. Uh, you know, lawn should be the end game for every class. It's the toughest to gear. It's got the most versatility. It's, it should be the end game. So I'm excited for season 17 to see that lawn is going to be the end game for 
most classes. Um, I got to crunch numbers and do some more testing to see if it's going to be best for every class, but Lawn is going to be really good next season, and Lawn Rats are going to be insane for XP next season. Like, wow. Because now the Lawn Necro has the two free ring slots. I mean, Lawn Rats are going to be bananas good for XP next season. So... Um, I'll be doing videos on how to play season 17 efficiently, you know, coming down the road here when we get closer, but yeah, that's a little preview is lawn rats are going to be just nutty XP. And then we're actually getting some changes to some legendary items, which I did not expect. And I did not expect a brand new potion either. Bottomless potion of the unfettered. This is going to make you immune to control impairing effects for five to seven seconds after drinking this potion. So I assume five to seven is going to be something that rolls on the potion. So you're going to want one that rolls seven and, and a badly rolled one is going to be five. Um, so basically what this is, is you can't be frozen. Like if you get frozen, you can pop that potion and it'll break the, the freeze is what I'm assuming. So that's a big change. Because it's going to make this support barb less mandatory because it has ignore pain, which prevents you from being frozen and stuff. So we'll have to see if that has any rippling effects. I, I don't think so. I think the Z barb is still going to be basically essential. And then, you know, I don't need to go through every single one of these items here, but, um, you know, kind of underwhelming changes, in my opinion, on the items. I would have liked to see kind of more balancing than this you know revolving around sets and lawn and and more items than this need work in my opinion but hey at least it's some sort of balancing so that's better than nothing um and then you know i, I don't need to go through all the bug fixes i'll provide a link in the video description to you know to click on if you want to read all this stuff for yourself but i don't want to make this video too long i was just excited to crank something out go over the changes and kind of give you my opinions so in conclusion here just to kind of put a bow on everything and wrap it up i'm excited about a lot of this and i think this is overall a net positive i th the overall changes to the game were more than i was expecting i was not expecting things like that much stash base and you know, being able to search in your stash and, you know, all these changes that have come through for just the general game. But I was expecting a little bit more balancing, um, you know, like maybe around the lawn rats or the rat necro rat runs in general. Um, you know, buffs that are underperform or sets that are underperforming, maybe buff them a little bit. I was expecting more balancing, but I was expecting less of like the stash pace type stuff. So, all in all, I think it's a positive and a good thing. And hopefully, maybe there's going to be balance changes yet to come. But it doesn't look like it. So, um, you know, but also, you know, I was reading on Reddit and, and people are, you know, upset and all that. I would pose this question to people that are upset about the patch. What game do you know of that is seven, eight years old that doesn't? have microtransactions and doesn't have a monthly fee monthly subscription that still gets new content like what game out there is like diablo 3 no microtransactions no monthly subscription and seven years after release is still getting free content i can't think of one i'm sure somebody out there can think of one and will let me know in the comments but you know hey my point is the fact that we're still getting stuff for Diablo 3 when there's no microtransactions, no monthly subscription, and the game is 7, 8 years old. Um, oh, how old is it? So it's 2019, it was came out in 2012, so it's 7 years old. 7 years old, we're still getting free content with no microtransactions and no monthly subscription. I think that's a pretty good thing for Blizzard to do, because I can't think of another gaming developer that does that. So, yeah, anyway... Thank you, Blizzard. I'm excited to get in and test this patch. I'll be doing more content on this type of stuff when the PTR comes out and when we get closer to Season 17. And I'll probably do a few more videos kind of wrapping up Season 16. Hopefully more of that stuff coming soon. So, yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.